Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to edit your powder puff pictures in Photoshop today. So we have a picture of Jocelyn. This is a different one than the example I used in class. But I opened it in Drive and I'm going to download it. And then from my downloads, I can pull it right into Photoshop. I'm going to drag the image. Just drag it right into Photoshop and it will open right up for you. Command zero is fit to screen. First thing I'm going to do is command J my layer. So no matter what I do to this artistically, I always have my original picture in the background. So if you want to turn your layer visibility off, just click on the eyeball and back on. Now this doesn't make a change right here because if I turn it off, you're seeing this picture underneath still. But now you have nothing on and on. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is make a small adjustment to my brightness in her face using my curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to go curves and I'm going to grab right in the middle and drag up a little bit. Now I'm just going to watch the highlights in her face and I'm going to stop when my brights are where I want them, which is right about here. So not too much. Then on my mask, I'm going to hit command I and it's going to cover that adjustment with a black mask. Then I'm going to hit the letter B for brush. Make sure that my white is on top. And I'm going to go ahead and oops, change this to normal. Just click on the areas that I want to see brightened. So probably just in her cheeks up here, her hair. And you don't want to lose information. Anytime that you are doing an adjustment and you lose information in a picture, that's too much. And with brights and whites, that definitely can happen. So I'm good here. Now I'm going to double click the layer so you can see where I've painted right here on the mask. So that part I've painted the mask away and the black that's left there, those are the adjust the, um, the mask that's still sitting on top of my adjustment. So if I take this off, you can see the whole thing is much darker. Okay, now you might think this is actually too bright, and that's true, but I'm going to double click. And this layer style panel is going to come out. And if I hold my option key down, on this underlying layer, it brings up the shadows. So hold your option key and click on this arrow and the arrows will separate and then watch her face. They actually bring the shadows back into play and say, okay. So now you can see before, after, and it's just a small brightness adjustment. But it's gonna make a big difference because from far away, you wanna make sure that her face is really visible and sometimes you have to bring your brightness up to make her face noticeable from a farther distance. Okay, now we are going to actually bring in the um, grittiness of her face using the camera raw filter. So I'm gonna actually go Command E, and that Command E will merge the edit in the adjustment layer down into this top layer here. And then I'm gonna Command click, I'm sorry, control click, or you can right click, convert to smart object, and that smart object is going to allow you to put any filter you want on your picture, but plus a mask. So basically saying, oh yes, I want to make this area really gritty, but only this area in the hair and not in the face. So then I'm going to go filter camera raw filter and I'm gonna go bring my shadows up so you can see the more information happening here you gotta be careful though because if you bring it all the way up you can start to see like right in here the noise which is an indicator of a high ISO so you don't want to go too far up so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit here then I'm going to go to my texture, bring my texture up, 
Now what's going to happen is that her skin is going to get worse. So that's the only issue with this is that you'll notice in a project like this, you don't want like the skin to be worse. So you might have to go actually back in with Photoshop. I'm going to bring it right here. I'm going to bring my blacks up though because it just looks really, yeah, vibrance. I don't know about that yet. All right, let's go to my saturation levels, luminance, all these things. Bring my red up, my orange, I don't know, no. Just my reds. Blue. It's not a lot of blue. I'm trying to get the gray of the dots. It's kind of getting them. All right, and then purple, magenta. I don't really know if this is helping. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, okay. Okay, so you can see that huge difference there before, after. Now, two, you can see, look at her skin. Yeah, her skin is better before doesn't look good right now. So I'm going to actually go into Command-J and say OK. So now I have this sort of above and now I can paint directly on this. You can't like make corrections on a smart object. You have to Command-J the layer and then make it an unsmart object which is called like rasterizing your file. You can just click on it and it will rasterize. Anyway, this is my point, is I'm going to come over here with my blemish correction, spot healing. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm just going to get rid of some of these bumps right here. If you just click, it will go away. And you can soften this too if you want to, but I don't really want to. Let's do that one. A couple of them on her nose. Okay. Pretty good. So now I'm going to paint on here, which is what we talked about. So I'm going to grab my brush or B. And I definitely don't want this yellow because we had that last time and I did not like it. I'm going to do this right here. And I'm going to make sure that my blending mode or my brush blending mode is set to, I think we said soft light last time, opacity 41. And there you go, yeah. And I'm gonna go all the way. It's kind of hard to get like the right pressure. It's better to go big. And then I'm gonna shift, drag, over, click over here. And then you can see that red starting to come in. Now, let's say that I wanted even more control. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, I'm just gonna click on a new layer so there's like nothing. And then I'm gonna paint on that layer. I'm gonna change my color too, to like something more orange. Yeah, okay, I kind of like this, but what we can do is then this is its own separate layer. And then you can go to your blending mode and it will like preview if you just hover. I kind of like that one. 
Lighten. Screen. And I like Lighten better. Color Dodge. There's all different ones. Overlay. Eh. Too dark. Soft light. That's how we had it. Hard light. Vivid light. Exclusion. Ooh, exclusion is kind of cool. Ooh, saturation. Let's go to lighten. Screen. No, lighten. Okay. And then we're going to bring the opacity down a little bit. And that is the red. Now, if I wanted to then duplicate that, super easy, and Command T, and you can just move, literally, the ray of light over here. So you're actually not moving the other one, you're moving this one. And you can shrink it down or make it bigger. Yeah. I kind of like this. It's okay. This is the reason that I brought the clarity up so much is because I knew this ray of light was going to sit over the photo and you really needed that texture on the face. I think you could really bring the um, saturation up in the face though. So I'm going to go back to my camera raw filter and I'm going to bring my vibrance Let's go clarity even more. So, here we go. I'm going to bring my vibrance like, pretty much all the way up. I'm going to say okay. Yeah, e even that, it's like hard to see that it's making a difference. Oh, oh I wonder if it's because I have... Yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> Okay, yeah, see how different that is? But you can see the bumps are back. Okay, so what we then have to do is, let's see if I can drag this up. This is actually gonna be a first for me because I really don't know if this is gonna work. Can I duplicate this? No, how about this? No. How about this? Yeah. That's tough. Okay, so you can see what I'm trying to do here. So the answer is to make sure that you have this actually with a camera raw smart filter too on it. No, I wonder if, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Wait, I'm going to make a mask. Yeah, okay. And now I'm going to brush my oh, soft light. Go to normal, 100%. Yeah, okay, so that was the problem. I knew let's see if that's better. Yeah. It's crazy how different that is. All right, now we're going to add the text. Sorry for the delay. That was very complicated. So text, it's going to automatically make a new text layer. I'm going to drag it across the whole top. And we're going to go juniors. Now, right now, it's, I think, oh, it's that color. That's the reason. Oh, no. I wonder if we could do white. That looks okay. I don't know. Kind of like the yellow. Let's see. Do that. So, oh yeah. So I, if you click I, it turns into an eyedropper, and you can collect that color right there. C. 
So I'm going to do this and there we go. And then I'm going to just make this way bigger and actually make it like bleed off the edge a little bit. And then again, you can go into your layer styles and do some other weird things. You can change your blending mode, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go normal. Inner shadow stroke, inner glow. I think that's going to be probably distracting. Outer glow. I can't even see this. Oh yeah, now I can. Oh, I hate it. Okay, so whatever color style you want, gradient overlay, you know, just say okay. So that's that. Um, there's like a hundred things you can do in here too. You can warp this. Um, Command T. You can do like skew, you could go that way, that looks kind of cool. Okay, so that's it. And then if you wanted to make another one of these, Command J, you can like bring it to the top, over the word and like change the blending mode on that. No, do not do that. It looks kind of cool. I might leave that. I'm going to bring the opacity down. Yeah. Okay. So there's like about a hundred other things you can do. Um, if you wanted to do like a brush stroke on top of everything, you can go into your brushes and just to give you an idea, uh, there we go. These are all of your weird brushes. Go, not smoothing. Noise, texture, okay. I'm gonna, you can see this brush is huge and it's yellow. So, oh wait, it's on normal. Let's make a new layer. There we go. So that is a brush stroke. Now, there's going to be like a little bit of a delay. And you have to know too that you are in this regular normal um, mode here. So if you're in like overlay, it's going to be different. Actually, it doesn't look that different. I really like that. What if we went like dark? And then you just did this down. Nope. I think the problem is the brush, dry media brushes. Chunky charcoal. Oh, that could be a thing. Okay. I kind of just like the one. Whoa, okay. Here we go, cool. So we're gonna grab that, I'm gonna go Command T. You can make it bigger, I don't know, why is it not? I 
And I'm gonna put this over. This I like this because it's kind of like the mud. Yeah. And then you can just duplicate this too. Come on, buddy. All right, I'll just have to Command J everything. Anyway, so that's that. And then just your move tool. <laughs> Don't do that. Go up here. There we go. Now you have this other one. And you can do whatever you want with it. I almost just like the one of them, except it has a weird edge there. It seems like the edge is on all sides, except for that one. Okay. So go down. Oh my, my shift key isn't working. Okay. So there's the mud splatter. It almost looks like her head is exploding a little bit, so I might not go with that. I might move this to like down here or over here. But you guys get the idea. Why is it doing that? Okay. Oh, see how it's like default grabbing the other one? Weird. Alright, Photoshop. So that's some of the things. You could too just make this huge. Why it's oh that is a really big brush. Or tiny. And we're going to say save. Save early and often, not in downloads. Desktop Jocelyn 1. Photoshop file, yes layers. Okay. All right. So that is some starting points. I hope you enjoyed.